So I'm currently at a press media event, hence the suit, uh, and it's all to do with this, the new Piccadilly Line trains which are being built here in Goole in Yorkshire, and I've been dying to say this line for ages now when we knew that this factory was being built. Today is the day that we get round to look around the Siemens factory where they're building the new tube trains. Now Siemens are actually calling the Gore facility a railway village and it's officially being open today which means that there are speeches from several people most of whom I get a chance to catch up with later to ask the questions that I have about the new stock. It's truly an honour to be with you Sambit and your fantastic team here at Siemens. But with my high vis and bump cap firmly on I'm going for a walk around to get up close to several of the new Piccadilly line units and see how they're built. So we're just going on a little tour around this incredibly impressive room. Welcome to Ghoul, this is the assembly hall and in here we assemble the trains. Also on Ghoul we've got many other buildings where we store the car bodies which are in that direction comes into the assembly hall then we take the cars out of the assembly hall into the trucking building where we put the bogies on those cars that have bogies of course and then we go from the trucking hall into the commissioning hall out the front doors and onto the main line. Now the new Piccadilly line trains are nine cars long, not six. And I'm trying to remember the configuration. Now if I remember right, we had like IMs and KMs. I can't remember what the acronyms stand for though. I, I'm yes, hoping, go I, on. I, I can tell you. Go on. Would you like me to do it now? No, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, go on. so the IM is the intermediate car. They're the ones without the bogies. And the KMs must be... And that's the key motor vehicles. Key motor vehicles, right. And then the DMs the are the driver and motor vehicles. one of each of those at either end. Uh, usually, Jeff, yeah. yes. <laughs> if, you, if, you've, if you've assembled it correctly, you should have a DM <laughs> at either end, yes. I'm imagining that, yeah, Oh, chap, lads, we, we've missed off on the we, driving we've motors. We've missed one. No, yeah. no, it the, always The train has to. works, but only in one direction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But here at Siemens, <laughs> we, we, we like to do things properly. So, yes, the new nine-car train has a driving motor car at each end. In the middle, there are then three motor cars alongside four intermediate cars. They're the ones without the bogies. Put them all together in this order, and that's what makes up the whole train. That's interesting, though. Where, how, do, how do final train numbers get get assigned? Is it as they roll out the factory? So train numbers get the train numbers. It's part of the scheduling programme that's uh, designated out in Vienna. So each car body that goes into production to be welded together as an aluminium frame yes. then gets allocated a train number and a position within that train. So this is car, this is train 18, car body 96. Over there, I can see a big, uh, a a big rack of gubbins, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that's our warehouse. Now that warehouse is big enough to hold the capacity for two full trains worth of equipment that we need to install on every car body that comes through the factory. So is it literally a case that people will bring the parts over? Like, in it, how does, you know... Yeah, same as your Amazon order. So we'll put an order in <laughs> on our side from an assembly perspective. That then goes through the computerised system and then warehouse then go and pick our product that we want delivering to the line and then they bring it line side for us as and when we need that component and then within hours it's then fitted onto the car body. Dave's just walking me down <laughs> and there's just, I'm like, are these bits of trains? It's just bits of trains just lying. What, what is it? Evaporating unit for the driver's cab. That's the evaporating unit for a driver's cab. But over here, look, there's some doors. There are some doors which you've yet to attach to a train. Let's go find the doors. It's like you're in a shop and you go, I'll have one of those, one of those. It's exactly like that. Two of those. <laughs> <I don't... laughs> Fantastic. I can't actually go in this one. I'm literally standing as close as I can because this one is very much under construction. As you can see, it's got no seats, but you can see all the gubbins that will be beneath the seats. I'm guessing maybe some of that over there, some of the... Uh, the air conditioning part. This is this is one of the shorter ones, isn't it? This is this is one of the IMs. This looks like a shorter, non-bogey one. I'm looking into a raw, unfinished Piccadilly line carriage. That's kind of cool. And I chat to Jade, an apprentice who's working on building the trains. So first, it will turn up into three and five. In three and five, they will fit the installation. They will run the cables, and they will attach the jumper cables that we saw on the outside. Then in six and seven, we will then start. Um, dressing the cables in and attaching them to each terminal and connecting the railings. We did very well. Well it's just the under seat, so the jumper cables, so these are the what's um, attaching the electricity to each car body. Um, so under here we'll fit all these um, onto this um, rack in and then under there you can see where it will then fit to the next car body. 
Um, so these are cables are for the passenger information system, so we'll feed these from this transformer all the way out. We will then plug the ends ready to attach onto the information. Time to ask a few questions, because when I'd been in Wildenrath last year to see the first one off the production line, half were being built in Austria and half were being built in Gaul, but I'd heard that since then that figure had changed. I also wanted to know when the first one is expected to run on the underground in London, and of course, beyond the Piccadilly line, will there be an order of this stock to replace the old trains on the Bakerloo as well? It's a very positive news for us in UK. We are now going to do 80% of the trains in Gould. So TfL has shown confidence after looking at our facility, our manufacturing, everything, and we have agreed to do now 80% of the 94 trains for Piccadilly line in Gould. Trains under test in Germany already. First train will be heading across to the UK imminently, literally in a matter of weeks. Uh, we'll then do some tests uh, on it uh, without it going out onto the network and then we'll progressively start testing on the network uh, hopefully before the end of this year uh, where we start to do compatibility testing, check that the infrastructure uh, works and then we'll slowly get more trains delivered through 2025 with uh, the current plan to get first train in service before the end of 2025. So the uh, Piccadilly line is an investment of £2.9 billion. Pounds. The point I'm making to the government is the Bakerloo line trains are even older than the uh, Piccadilly line trains. These trains were rolled out when I was in short trousers. The Bakerloo line trains, the year I was born, that was a long time ago. And so what I've said to the Secretary of State and the government is, look, here you've got a purpose-built factory. If uh, the government was to green light new trains at the Bakerloo line, it means they would benefit from these new trains. But also this factory would know there's uh, an order around the uh, uh, corner. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed that our lobbying, uh, our, case, our case making, our pleading uh, will come off in an announcement months and years to come. When we were in Wildenrath last year, um, there was a comment that the windows weren't as large as the existing Piccadilly trains, and some people speculated that sort of the, the bars in between the windows were, were there to house the air conditioning. But no, you, you're going to show me where the air conditioning is. That's not the case. Let's find out where the actual air conditioning is. Okay, so your air conditioning comes from your HVAC unit, which is located directly below where I am right now, which is your heating, ventilation, and air conditioning module. Now that then's fed up into air conditioning ducting that is in this area underneath these priority seats. From there, it's fed up into overhead ducting that runs in this one here and comes up into the ceiling and up here and into the ceiling here. Exactly the same here. This is part of the air conditioning ducting here, running, so it's fed in, and then up into the ceiling and into here. And then it's distributed across the ceiling panel by the airflow. To take all of the warm air and the dirty air out, it's then fed in through these grill units for a filtration system. And then you'll see on the outside, that's the exhausts. And that's where the warm air then gets pushed out from the car body. We've worked out what these are. You know. Yes. They're to strengthen the train because the train is not made well, of steel. No, it's an aluminium car body. So we have to strengthen that car body. And obviously there's, there's a lot of gaps, as you see, in this car body. So we need these uprights to um, keep the strength of the car body. So traditional tube trains for many years were all just steel, steel bodies. And one, yes. one of the things that was specified was for this train to be as light, light as, 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 possible. as possible. As you also recall, with it having less bogies I'm on. Try, I'm trying to yes, recall that, less, okay. less bogies <laughs> on. And, and also, because it's lighter, therefore it uses less energy. Yes. Mm. And will accelerate and decelerate quicker? You can pull away a little bit faster with a lighter train? Yes, it will. That's yeah. the plan, okay. okay. Yeah. So the new trains are looking great. But what's really great is the sense of community that Siemens have brought to this facility. Goal is firmly on the map. It's firmly on the map in the East Riding. And more importantly, it's firmly on the map across Britain. And I am delighted with that. And it's about time to the people here are wonderful. They are great. The community is amazing and my goodness me, I'm delighted that this company along with others that will be investing have realised that and they're here and it's now and it's great. Yeah, it's huge and I, and I think the local councillor uh, really captured what we wanted to create here at Gull. She talked about how Siemens had, had enriched the community, embraced the community and, and for me we always talked about wanting to do that, but to have that feedback from the local councillor that we've achieved that, 
and we've done so much for the local community. It's more than just a rail village. It's, it's creating jobs and uh, enriching people's lives. And they're packing down from the press event. I have hat hair. That was amazing. That was inside Piccadilly Line trains, 2024 stock being built here at the Siemens factory in Gaul in the East Ridings of Yorkshire. They should be in service, as Andy Lord said, hopefully, hopefully by the end of next year, the end of 2025. It's beeping. It's like a, a factory with things going on. Uh, thanks very much. Thanks for watching. Press subscribe. <laughs> See you soon. <laughs>